We're really going excited. to taste yours because I didn't come all the way to Texas Hill Country <laughs> not to taste uh, some brand new St. Louis with you. But let's first so excited. taste the tiny bottle. Yes. Hello and welcome to My Tiny Bottles, the project where I'm exploring my grandmother's legacy of miniature liquor bottles one tiny bottle at a time. I'm your host, Tammy Coxon, and my guest today is Jennifer Queerbees. Jennifer, tell the people about yourself. Hi, I'm um, the founder and owner and importer of Brandy St. Louis. She didn't show you her bottle uh, yet, but it bottle. is a beautiful bottle. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tammy. Yeah, it's an should... honor to be here with you. It's I'm a big fan. It is a delight. <laughs> Uh, so I first encountered Jennifer when I heard her on a podcast. I think it was the Speakeasy podcast. And um, then as I was researching this bottle of DeValcor French brandy, it's a um, 1988 to 2003 is the range I've been able to come up with for this one. Um, but it is a negociant brandy. And as I was researching it, I was like, well, what exactly do they mean when they talk about negociants? And I was searching that term online and your name popped up and your brandy popped up. And I remembered you from the podcast and I thought, aha, that is who I'm going to ask to taste this little bottle with me. I love it. I'm so, again, I'm so honored. I'm really excited about this. Thank you so much. So what do we mean when we mean negociant? What does that term mean anyway? Basically, that is how cognac houses and a lot of wineries really were traditionally um, structured. You didn't, they didn't own, they didn't make um, all their products from seed to bottle, right. as they kind of say now, you know, try to do now. But um but you, you'd go around and you'd, there, you'd go to the same producers and the families that have been making it for hundreds of years, different brandies, or even grape selection, really? and you'd find the best of the best of, every single year. So you were negotiating with the different um, producers, um, mostly families that have been doing it. The ones that I've been, um, that I use with mine have been doing it for hundreds and hundreds of years, and they just, that's what they do, and everybody's very specialized. Right, so you have the people who know how to make, the, to grow the grapes, grow the grapes, people who know how to make the brandy, the make distiller. the brandy. And then the cellar master, the blender. It's right. all very technical. And so that's really how it was traditionally done. So all I did was follow tradition. Excellent. Yeah. Well, we're really going excited. to taste yours because I didn't come all the way to Texas Hill Country <laughs> not to taste uh, some Brandy St. Louis with you. But let's first so excited. taste the tiny bottle. Yes. Um, so aged 10 years. We don't know where in France this came from. It's just a product of France. Uh, who makes Brandy in France? Um, so there's three different kinds of classified brandy that you would you would hear of, is, and uh, that would be Calvados, in that's apple brandy mm -hmm. from Normandy, and then you have cognac, and then Armagnac in the south southeast southwest of France, and then. And, and then it, right in between there, where, where some of mine comes from, just outside the or, the Appalachian of origin, uh, the region of Cognac, um, comes from right between there and Armagnac. So that's why I have to call it French brandy. Right. And I guess Cognac. brandy made anywhere else in France could be called brandy, yeah. but it can't have one of those name exactly. designations. Right. And that's the word brandy. And it comes from the Dutch word brandy vine. Right. Burnt wine. Burnt wine. Burnt wine. Yes. All right. Well, the color on this is gorgeous. Very nice. It's actually, very nice. Much. Uh, I'm going to give you the last of it. I don't know where it all went. It's just like emptied out really quickly. Um, uh, you know, the bottle's kind of dirty and this kind of golden color. So I wasn't quite sure what color to expect from the brandy, but it actually is a gorgeous. really gorgeous deep color. Mm -hmm. um, does color Amber. tell us anything when we think about brandy? Um, Typically, just uh, the age of it, but I mean, I see it depends, maybe the toast of the barrels, you can okay. kind of tell. But a lot of times there are additives in there, so right. you can't really. So you can't really tell. I mean, that's mm -hmm. like rum, you know, rums can be really dark in color and light in flavor and vice versa. Uh -huh. The nose on that is beautiful. It, it's warm here, Texas Hill Country. So, uh, yeah, getting a huge ton of aromatics right off the bat with this, huh? where sometimes I find uh, other brandies that I've opened take a little time to mm -hmm. open up after they come out of the bottle. But this one, gorgeous. Got a lot of nose going on. Mm -hmm. Any particular notes? Well, at first I got a little bit of floral, slightly floral, but it was sort of like a jasmine floral, yeah. I would say. Not like rose, you know. Mm -hmm. No, I can see that. Um, and then got like a little bit of hint of leather and okay, ten years age. I, so it's yeah, not, yeah, I it's love that. These are plants. There's some notes that are very similar on, from. You'll, it'll be interesting. To I'm see. I'm excited. What do you smell? It, you know, I'm I, I get this thing that I just think of like as brandy smell, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's kind of like it's a little bit. It's, it's like, like it, it, it actually is. 
a tasting note and a... Right. It's, well, it's like wine on steroids. Yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. That's what it is. Um, and then almost like a little bit of caramel. Mm -hmm. And that might just be like the color that, mm -hmm. you know, I expect to find caramel there. All right. Well, I'm going to go in. Are you going to go yeah, in? Yeah, let's All do right. it. Cheers. Full tea. <clears throat> All right, what do you think? I me, mean, you've tasted probably they a say lot the more first brandy sip than I have. Should be yeah. So I do like my scotch. second sip. Yeah, it's like scotch. You can you should know, take three sips. The finish is really interesting. Wow, it's a very long, beautiful finish. Amazing finish. At the beginning, I got this really like beautiful bright fruit kind of right off the bat and then in the middle I'm getting this thing that I think of as old bottle taste okay right there's to me just this kind of little bit of like a little spicy like on my mid palate I'm okay a little spice a little bit spice and I kind of get bad. this like kind of slightly dusty yeah. dusty yeah. Is the way yeah. I would describe yeah. it right I love um, that but then that finish it's long it's super long because, and kind of sharp right uh -huh, like uh -huh. it's making my mouth water back yeah. here yeah it's really, I, this is crazy. I've never tasted something so similar to. No way. Yeah, this is oh, crazy. Oh, that's crazy. I, I, yeah, I have it. And I'm thinking, you know, there's some, a lot of really fine cognacs that are sometimes 50 years old. And, but the finish and, you know, they're delicate and they're lovely. But then you try it and it just poof goes away. This is still going. This is crazy. And not that there's anything wrong with it. It's just different, you know. Yeah. It's long. I love a long finish. Just kind of the rich. Right. I mean, it's like, I'm here. Yeah. Pay attention to yeah. me. Keep yeah. paying attention to yes. me. Yeah. Yeah. I love the, the opening and I love the finish. There's something in the middle that I'm not. It's like courant. Okay. And then again with the smell. And now it's opening mm -hmm. up a little bit. All right. Well, we shouldn't drink it all because we have some compare and contrast oh, yes, to do. Yes. Yes. So you say, so tell me a little bit more Crazy. about Brandy St. Louis. Where do you get it from? How old is it? How's it made? Yeah. Like, except unless they're trade secrets, of course. Oh, uh, yeah. No, definitely. Um, I try to be, I like to be as tra transparent as possible. I worked with bartenders, many of whom you know, um, throughout the country. I've been in the industry a really long time working for other brands. And there was a hole in the market for this. There Absolutely. Wasn't, there wasn't anything since phylloxera, for, since, um, you know, prohibition, really all of those, um, even the Sazerac in, in New Orleans has been replaced with bourbon or rye, or, uh -huh. you know, and so, but I, about two thirds of historic cocktails pre phylloxera, uh, pre World Wars, pre prohibition were brandy based originally and French 75s. Why would they have gin well, in there? We're gonna, we're gonna fight about that. I think the original we're... drink called the French seventy five was made with gin. gin really? I'll fight you about it, but there, but it's delicious made with brandy. But why? But why would it be called a French? Se okay. Anyway, right. well, 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 anyway, we'll, we'll talk about brandy. that afterwards. Well, anyway, there's a lot of theories there... and there's a lot of, um, yeah, and and certainly in the earliest days, you know, when you go back to the original old fashioned cocktail, mm -hmm. right? The drink at the time called the could just cocktail. Probably what they were using was most likely cognac yes. and then maybe rum and then Geneva. Exactly. Because those were high quality imported products. Yeah. As opposed to American whiskey, which could be a little dodgy at the time. Yeah, exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. And mint juleps, the first juleps, julep was definitely absolutely cognac. cognac. Yes. Yeah, it was a reliable aged spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we couldn't get it. And then, but a lot of times, so then um, I founded this. Uh, my first, it was May 2018, so it's been yeah. almost six years next month. Awesome. I can't believe it. And where's the name come from? So um, my gra uh, my grandmother was Louise, so that's another yeah. thing that we bonded about. Grandma uh, She loved her favorite cocktail was a Sazerac uh -huh. uh, from New Orleans. She's from New Orleans. Um, I have a lot of family there in Louisiana, so that was really inspiring to me. And then just sort of did a tribute to women that weren't able to own their own spirits. And she always felt like she never accomplished anything. Oh, wow. So I just, but she did, and she was very loved, and she raised three amazing children, and that is an you know, accomplishment. She did a lot, so I just did it in honor of her. But All right. about, um, do you want to hear about the blend a little bit? Yeah, yeah, about keep telling me, but I want to start yes, telling it go. while you do. <laughs> blend. Okay, we're going to pause. Hold on. Let's just pause. So we just had a huge wind gust. It almost sent the camera flying. Our awesome helper today uh, stopped that from happening. So thank, thank you, you Phil. Phil. Um, all right. You were just about to pour me uh, a yes, little we bit were a little half of Brandy St. Louis. Yes. All right. 
So about 10% of it is Uni Blanc from Grand Ch with the Grand Champagne region within the region of oh, Cognac, wow. which is different than the uh, the actual Champagne region where the wine is produced. But um, about 10% of it is that. Then uh, the the vast majority is also Uni Blanc, and it comes from just outside the AOC. They have to draw the boundary somewhere. Right. So the border is just this little road. This is French brandy. This is cognac. I know. It's so funny. You know, you have all those winemaking regions where, yeah. like, literally across the street, little stupid it street. can't call itself you know, brandy road. anymore, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's so the funny. same production, same uh, um, terroir as cognac, but I a fraction of the price. So that's why I was able to get it to this price point, um, you know, with, with this quality. Yeah. All right. Just well, it French brandy. It smells great. Oh, yeah. I will say when you're saying it's, it's this really reminds you of it, it does have that same kind of floral note right up front. Pretty Definitely noticing floral, floral and floral. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's amazing. <laughs> This is the most similar I've ever tried of any product. That's wild. This one, I will say, so it is, this one's, that one's 40%. This is 43. 43, so hot, hotter. That makes sense. And that was intentional because cognac typically goes, gets overpowered in cocktails. Absolutely. And um, also isn't cost effective to um, put into cocktails. So, um that's why I created it. And I tell people that after they've tried it, because oh, when I tell people that I created it for cocktails, they're like, they expect it, the quality to be beat. No, and that's poor. the thing about cocktails. I always tell somebody, like, don't put something into a cocktail that you wouldn't drink exactly. on its own. Especially when you're talking about sort of fairly simple cocktails, you know, like a sidecar. There's not a lot else going on there. Or a Sazerac or anything. Right. Like, yeah. So um, this is delicious. Yeah. It definitely doesn't have the dusty thing. Right? Yeah, it doesn't yeah, have yeah. the old bottle thing mm -hmm. that I noticed here. That's really um, interesting. But... But it does have a lot of that same fruit flavor, that aroma, and also a really nice long finish. It's it's the hitting finish. me different. It's mm. not way back there. Yeah. It's like the sides of my tongue instead of like the back of my uh -huh. head. I don't know. I know, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Clo yeah. Wait, I forgot what they call that back palette. It's a sort of, and then the finish is sort of more in the middle of my palette, like the uh -huh. mid tongue instead of. Yeah, yeah. But they're both really good. It's just they're both really good. How they how it affects Yeah, this is this is delightful. I have had this, I think, mixed into a cocktail once, uh, maybe a couple times. Maybe I had it at a bar and I didn't know, but it hasn't been readily available in states that I've lived in. So yes. that's part of why I was excited to come here and taste it with you. Thank mm. you. Yep, Thank there it is. You. That that fruity finish very much reminds very me of the other similar, one. Right? Yeah. That is really that's really delicious. Wow. Negotiants, where it's at. Uh, it is. Anything else, you, uh, anything else you want to tell us about Brandy St. Louis? Um, this label was an Armagnac label from 1837 that I customized. I really wanted the packaging to um, correlate with the liquid. And um, I guess if I talk about what's the next step for it, yeah. we're about to, I'm about to launch next week in New York with Frederick Wildman as the Brandy to, that's paired with chartreuse. That's awesome. Can you, Big news. Can you put some pressure on the monks to get more chartreuse into I'll the try. American market? I'll Thank try. You. I'll I, try. I'll I, do my best. I appreciate that. I was actually in Voiron at uh, chartreuse. And at, it was pretty cool at the visitor center. Yeah. And uh, we were getting a, a guided tour and the guide was speaking in French and I had a translation app going and I have translated on my phone. The Americans always want more, but the monks, they are impervious. <laughs> That's excellent. Yeah. All right. Well, you are an American brandy maker and I happen to have an American brandy. The American brandy. The American the brandy. The American brandy. One might say. So I think <laughs> this is going to be a little bit of maybe going from a high yes. to another high to a low. I mean, I'm, I don't know. You're, you're I optimistic. Don't, I don't, I, I'm optimistic. I'm very curious. So this is Christian Brothers. Uh, pretty, these days, bottom shelf brandy. But um, in its day, it was kind of a big deal. You know, they were one of the first um, wineries making wine in uh, California and really kind of driving uh, Napa as a wine growing mm -hmm. destination um, and then got into brandy. Um, and, you know, I'd be a lot more optimistic about this bottle if it wasn't half empty. Um, the evaporation will, however, I think probably have concentrated the sweetness. So 
All right. It's a little raisiny, but he, it gets See, it's him. totally a sealed bottle, just plastic. <laughs> you, have you drunk much Christian Brothers? Um, not a whole lot, but their sacred bond okay. is people use that in their well a lot, but they age it in bourbon barrels, so it tastes like bourbon. I don't know what they were aging it, probably wine barrels back then. Maybe. Man. Yeah. Well, this is not that old. This is like a, this has got a government warning label. So it's after oh. 1989. So I think um, because of who made it and where it's from and everything, I think I dated this between 1989 and 1996. Okay. So it's still like 40. High school years. 40 years. Oh, oh yeah. Well. All right. Well, it's, it smells good. good. That, it doesn't it smell does. bad. I would definitely like drink, drink this. Well, let's see how it tastes. <laughs> Definitely the sugars have concentrated. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad taste. It still tastes like brandy. It's it does. Just, it's like essence of brandy. If you wanted a brandy concentrate that you were then going to mix with something else. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well said. When I tasted one of these old evaporated bottles with Souther Tea, he was like, yeah, you know, if we maybe added some vodka to this. Thing, yes, that looked amazing. Right. And uh, yeah, if we had some vodka here, we could like add the alcohol yes. back in and send a, get a truer picture of it. This is actually uh, better than I expected. That's always a delight. Yeah, yeah. No, it doesn't. It's about kind of like, I had high hope. I had sort of, I don't know, I was optimistic. I don't You were way more optimistic than I was. I just love brandy. I mean, oh. All right. Well, this was an absolute delight. Such a pleasure. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and your expertise Thank and you. your My pleasure. amazing brandy. Thank you so much. For and uh, you also look me. for Brandy St. Louis at a liquor store near you. It'll be available for way more of you soon, I hear. Uh, so that is exciting. We're ending very quickly. Yay. Yes. That is fantastic. I've been a one-woman show up until now, but we're about to get some help. So besides people's local liquor stores, where can they find you? Ooh, I mean, I'm Are at mostly online? cocktail. Yes, online, ricospirits.com, R-I-C-O-U, spirits. But if you Google Brandy St. Brandy St. Louise, that will come up. Um, Instagram, Brandy St. Louise. Awesome. Um, and at your favorite cocktail bar. Yes. Hopefully in the well. Ask Right, ask your bartenders. Yes. Can you stock Brandy St. Louise? Yes. And can you please? <laughs> and of course, you can find me at mytinybottles.com or at mytinybottles on Instagram and Facebook. You can also follow me at Tammy Coxon on Blue Sky. Uh, come on back uh, for more tasting episodes, more bottle picks, more deep dives. Thank you so much. Thank Jennifer. you, Tammy. Cheers. Cheers.